Hello and welcome to Wagner Academy. This is lesson 1.5 for geometry about angle relationships. Make sure you know this vocabulary and terminology by the time we're done with this lesson. We'll come back to that and see if you do. And make sure you use extra examples in your book for additional help with your assignments if you're one of my students. Let's get right into it. We're going to be talking about angle relationships in this lesson, but first I want to introduce some people that may make an appearance later on in one of our videos. They just wanted to say hello. So hello, Fire Marshal Bill. Hey kids, how you doing? I'm here to teach you about geometry and fire safety. Let me show you something. We've got Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Gollum, Gollum. Smeagol, so happy to be here. We've got Bear Grylls. I'm Bear Grylls. And I like eating grubs for breakfast. And we have Cartman as well. I don't even know why I'm here. This is dumb. I'm not supposed to even be in geometry. Okay, Cartman. Anyways, these problems are in their honor. They're all leaving now, so farewell, guys. And types of angle pairs. So this first one, it looks like we have two angles that are right next to each other. And... That's the basic idea, excuse me, we call these adjacent angles. Adjacent angles. So adjacent, I think of adjacent things as being right next to each other. And adjacent angles share a common side and vertex, but no common interior points. So that's what goes in those blanks. And as we go through this lesson, I'm going to use a highlighter at times to show you some things. I would say don't use something like a highlighter yourself because I may be writing things on here and then erasing them and showing you something different. So just watch the highlighter part. So at this angle right here, FRI, the red one, would have a vertex and a side in common with both FRE and IRE. However, IRE is the one that's adjacent. This is the, going to be the adjacent one because although FRE shared a common vertex and side, ray RF, with the red angle, it didn't have this being fulfilled. We had common interior points with that one. So this point here, there are points here in red. Let me get my pen out again. So this point here in red, this point here in green. Any point you pick within the green spot, whether it's here, 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 it doesn't have those in common with any of these red points here, 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 and here. So these are right next to you. They share this common vertex inside and they share no interior points. And so let's write down what the angles are, or what this pair would be. Since we're talking about angle pairs here, the adjacent angles in this picture would be FRI, that's the red one, and IRE. And remember, you could say IRF instead of FRI. As long as it draws that angle out as you connect those dots, you're good to go. So that's a good way to write that one. And then Gollum's problem, or Gollum's example here, we have vertical angles in this picture. And there's actually two pairs of vertical angles in the picture. And the critical thing that I remember with vertical angles, and I would like you to remember as well, is that they're non-adjacent angles. They're formed by two intersecting lines. So that's the big thing I remember. They make, when you put them together, they make two perfectly straight lines. So if we look at this again, I'm going to highlight some things. Again, I would say don't do this, just watch this. So the red angle right here is vertical. If you put it together with this angle, they're going to make these two perfectly straight lines together. And you could also use this angle right here with this angle right here. So those are my pairs of vertical angles. And so if I write the pairs out, the red one, I have angle GOL or why don't uh, you can leave it like that if you wrote it like that already I'm gonna go I just think it's more fun to spell words when I can so angle log angle LOG and angle so LOG that's the red one UOM would be the other red one that would be 
a pair of vertical angles. Something that we'll learn more about later is that vertical angles are actually congruent as well. So this one is congruent to this one. These two things are equal. And we also know that the green ones are pairs of or are a pair of vertical angles. And so on this one, I'm gonna go with L O M. That's this green angle right here, and angle, so L O M, and we have G O U. So this is one pair, and this is the other pair. And then this one in honor of Bear Grylls, this one was for Fire Marshal Bill. Uh, we've got vertical angles, adjacent angles, and then in this last one we have something called a linear pair. And it kind of sounds like a line to you, doesn't it? I hope that's what you're thinking. A linear pair, they make a line together. They're a pair of angles that make a line together. So they're adjacent angles. They have to be like this, where they're right next to each other, sharing that common vertex and side. And this should be whose non-common sides form or are opposite rays. So the non-common sides for these two adjacent angles would be AB and AR. They go in exact opposite directions. And in other words, they form a straight line together, those non-common sides. And so the angle pair that you have here, this one I think is pretty straightforward. You've got BAE and RAE. So angle BAE and angle RAE form a linear pair. And so example one, let's put these things into practice in this example. Name an angle pair that satisfies each condition. So two acute adjacent angles and then two obtuse vertical angles. So I'm gonna get out my highlighter again and I would say don't write anything down, just watch for this part. So two acute adjacent angles. Well, let's see, I've got this one, but that's obtuse. That would be adjacent to this one right here. So yeah, those are adjacent angles, but both of them aren't acute. The red one, however, is acute. That's definitely less than 90. Since you have 90 here, this would have to be 90 over here, A and T. So if I think about that then, and I get rid of this, what if I used this instead? This angle right here, is that acute? Sure is, that's less than 90. This one plus this one together make 90, so both of them individually would have to be less than 90. And so it looks like these are a possibil possibility. This is a possible pair. Not sure what I was saying there, possible. Um, so we have angle A and R. And angle, this looks like R and T or T and R. You could say it either way. And then two obtuse vertical angles. So I'm going to get rid of what I had here. It's Christmas time, right? Red and green. Um, and going with now two obtuse vertical angles. So I see some vertical angles in this picture. I see this one and this one. These form two perfectly straight lines together when you put them together, this line and this line. However, those are both acute, so that can't be it. So what about, oh, where's an obtuse angle? I see an obtuse angle right here. Since this is 90, right there, this would be bigger than 90, this angle. And that is vertical with this one right here. They form these two perfectly straight lines together. So we've got our answer. We just need to label it correctly. So this would be CNR. You could say CNR would work. and CNR, and you could say TNM. That would also work. And again, you can switch orders of the letters. So MNT would work instead of TNM, and RNC would work instead of CNR. Moving on to our second slide here. A couple more guests that might make appearances later down the road. Hello, Stuart from Mad TV and Kronk from the Emperor's New Groove. Stuart, how are you doing? Glad you're here. Hi, it's good to be sure where my mom is though. We'll find her, Stuart. And Kronk, 
from the Emperor's New Groove. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Good to be here. Thanks, Kronk. And I'll see you guys later, all right? So there they go. They are heading out. What do we have here? This one is for Stuart. Used to be on Mad TV, something that was kind of like Saturday Night Live. It's been canceled, but still lots of great stuff that can be found on, on YouTube with Stuart in it. So complementary angles right here, that's what we have in this one. Complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 degrees. And so here, angle 1 and angle 2 clearly are adjacent angles that add up to 90 because you have this little box in the corner indicating that they are perpendicular, that it's a right angle. And so we could say angle 1 and angle 2, those would be complementary angles. And then over here, angle stew and angle mad. If you add those together, they don't have to be adjacent to be complementary, they just need to add to 90 degrees. So 65 plus 25, that's 90, it sure is. So angle stew and angle mad. So those are two pairs, two legitimate valid pairs of complementary angles. And this other one is supplementary. So how do you keep these two things straight? How do you keep complementary and supplementary straight? This is how I do it. Supplementary, these are angles that add to 180 degrees. I remember that C comes before S in the alphabet, just like 90 comes before 180 on the number line. So think of it like that. I think it makes it easy to remember which one is which. And angle 3 and angle 4, here they form a linear pair. And we know that a line is 180 degrees, so that means they're supplementary. They have to add to 180. So anytime you see a linear pair, that's an automatic supplementary pair. And then this one, here they're not adjacent, they don't form a linear pair together because they're not adjacent, however, they do add to 180, so they're still supplementary angles. So this was Kronk from the Emperor's New Groove, that was his problem there. We have that and new, angle new, would be a pair of supplementary angles. So moving on to example two, let's put that into practice now. Find the measure of two supplementary angles if one of the angles is seven times as large as the other. So you might be thinking, boy, how do I how do I go about doing this? Whenever you can draw a picture in geometry or in math in general, you should. It's a really good idea. Well, let's do that here. So I'm going to draw, since they're supplementary, I know they have to add to 180. That means I could have a linear pair. That would be a valid way to do this. So I'm going to draw a line. And then I know one of the angles is seven times as large as the other. So on here somewhere, I'm going to put in an angle. And I know one of the angles is much bigger than the other. I'm not going to draw this perfectly to scale, but I think that is pretty good right there to represent that this one is seven times bigger than this one. So if I called this x, I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to call it x. I know this one then, with respect to that angle, would be seven times bigger. It would be seven x. That should make setting up an equation very easy to do. Once we've done that grunt work, we've got seven x plus x equals 180. Together, they are supplementary. So from there, now it becomes a, I think, a, a fairly straightforward very simple algebra problem. So let's let's make this note real quick. You don't have to write this down, but in case that helps you, I'm putting this in a different color. Good idea to use different colors when I do. Remember this means they add to 180. So that's where this number is coming from. So if I continue to solve this combined like terms, I've got 8x equals 180 and then divide both sides by 8. And this one's not going to end up being a a nice clean integer. It's going to be a fraction or decimal answer for x. You have 22.5. So that's very important for us. So that doesn't tell us the final answer yet. We're trying to find both measures. So find the measure of two supplementary angles. So this means, I'm going to use my little therefore symbol again. Therefore, the smaller one, yes, in fact, it is the same thing as just plain old x. So 22.5 
degrees, that's one of our answers. It's the smaller angle. So 22.5 is a smaller angle, and I'll use my symbol for angle to shorten that. And you have 7 times that number, times 22.5. That's going to be the bigger angle. This, if you work that out, is 157.5 degrees. So this is... I'm running out of space here, the larger angle. Okay, let's move on to our final slide. Just three slides for this one. Lines that form right angles are perpendicular. Perpendicular, you've got 90 degree angles, you've got right angles. So in this picture, oh, sorry, Mr. Connery, introduce yourself. Hello, hello, my name is Sean Connery, and I'm a sophisticated old man. Yes, yes, you are, Mr. Connery. So thanks for stopping by. Hopefully we'll see you around later at some point. And we've got a right angle right here. You've got these two straight lines. We know vertical angles are congruent, so this one would be congruent to that one. That means those would both be 90. And we know these form a linear pair, O-E-R and R-E-Y. So they would have to be 90 here as well as here. And EY would be a linear pair with YER as well. So when you have one right angle with intersecting lines, you actually have four right angles. Knowing that helps us, I think, pretty easily to solve for X and Y in the picture below here. So we have 4X plus 5X equals 90. Together, these two angles, NEC and CEO, make up this right angle. So I can say 9x equals 90. And that means if I divide both sides by 9, I've got my answer. I've got that x equals, the 9's canceled out here, I've got x equals 10. And then likewise for this one, I've got 6y plus 12. That would have to equal 90 as well. So this time I didn't write out the angles. I could have said the measure of NEC plus the measure of CEO equals 90 first up here. And then solved it from there. I decided to leave that out here. If you get good enough at it, I think you should be able to do that sort of thing yourself as well. I think this is a pretty easy one to... We'll leave that out. So if I subtract 12 from both sides and then divide by 6 for this second equation, that's not going to be a 9, that's going to be a 78. There we go. That will give me my final answer for y. So I've got the 6s would be canceling there and there. My final answer for y would be y equals, this would be 13. And I can plug these back in. I should always do that whenever I can to check and see and verify for certain if I got it right. So if y is 13, 6 times 13 is 78. 78 plus 12 is in fact 90. If I plug in 10, I've got 40 here. I've got 50 here. Add those together, I got 90. So that worked out. That checks. And so from there, I think that'll do it for us. We've got these terms again that you should know now that we're through this lesson. If you have any questions, let me know in class if you're one of my students or feel free to comment on the video. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you for the last lesson in this chapter a little later, lesson 1.6.